Welcome to Oti Daku TV. Please subscribe to our channel if you are not yet subscribed. I'm Aisha. Today we have come to Acro Farms, a pesar which is in Eastern Region. Director, how did you start your farms? Oh, okay. Anyway, my name is Benson Opoku uh, from Ekropong Equipim. The plants came uh, somewhere 2007. Um, I have a little idea of making a pottery farm. And uh, I live at Ekropong Equipim, so I decided to do it over there. And then later on, I decided to come down here in a passare near Adoso Equipem to find a land. So after getting the land, I got 16.5 acres of land. So I bought it. And then later on, another family from this place upwards, they sold it to me. So in total, I got 32.15 um, acres. So afterwards, Initially, I was I wanted to do the depleter system. That's the local one we all know. And the, the idea changed. I do a lot of research when I want to do something, which I don't know. I do a lot of research to understand what I want to do. So I came across this system, which is a battery cage system. The other one is called depleter system. To be honest with you, the amount involved is very, very, very huge. So I contact one of my uh, my 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 best friend, and he is also evangelist at Grace Presbyterian Church, Ekropong. He's a very big man, not big man in terms of money, but he's an evangelist in the Presbyterian Church. Everybody knows him in Ghana and anywhere where we have. Presby Church. He's called Dr. Abu Ofei. And uh, he's into a Greek. Formerly, he was a teacher at Okapama Secondary School. He was a Greek teacher. So I contacted him and I told him this is what I want to do. But to be honest, I cannot. He told me, he was boldly look at me and said, Opoku, trust me, you can do it. And I was asking myself, how can I do it? Because it's not easy getting that huge money to do this project. So, the first thing I did is I registered the land. Now the land is for me. Now, I need to clear it because everywhere is a lot of, it's bushy, a lot of big, big trees and other things. So, I rent a bulldozer to clear the land. After clearing it, we saw that what we want to do, we need a flat land, but the land is not flat. So we need to go for excavator to cut the land so that we can get it flat. A friend of Mr. Bofe came across. The man is a contractor. He helped me a lot, to be honest with you. This man was able to bring all his bulldozer, three of them, to this place he said you know what it's for free all you do is buy the diesel give the driver truck money and a place to sleep that's all so i work with the earthwork for about six weeks with the with the excavators and the other things so afterwards then it has left with the equipment so i went to china with my team that is my project manager and then the contractor who is coming to construct the floor for us so we went to china to see how the system works we are about four of them so we went to china for four days for one week sorry and then we study everything and we came back so i told evangelist abu Ofe or dr abu Ofe that uh, we are back so this is what we saw i have signed the contract but i don't have the money and he said you know what let's start with what you have so when I came back, I transfer a little money to the company for them to see that I want to do it. So Dr. Bofe advised me to write a letter to SM Bank for a loan. So we did that. 
and the Exim Bank, whether you like it or not, when they accept your letter, your company or what you are going to do is supposed to be 1D, 1F. Because the president wants to open jobs for the people. So I wrote them a letter and then uh, they accepted the letter. They wrote, they wrote a letter back to me and then they told me that they are going to help. But it will be 1D, 1F. And I said, no problem. So I took a loan from them and then I transferred the money to China. I got all my equipment here. So I got this one, this one, the one at the top over there, and the house one. I got that one first. So equipment came, and uh, three of Chinese people came, and later on, another one joined us. So four or four of them, for about four months, with the local um, boys, they worked together. That was uh, last year, 2019. The first day we start working on this land was last year, 21st January 2019. We start the earthwork. So, from 21st January 2019 up to December 14th 2019, I had my own day old best from Holland. From um, September 4th up to December 28th, I had my golden eggs, three of them, golden eggs, on this farm. So after the 28th January, no, 28th December, I had my golden egg. 29th, I had another one, and they start, they start laying. So I decided to go for another layer house, which is house two. If I tell you the mind of eggs in Ghana here, you have no idea, I'm telling you. Up to now, I have about 80,000 bears, but I can't uh, meet my demand because a lot of people want eggs. Every single day, I have new people who are calling me asking for eggs every single day. So initially, the idea was something little, but uh, now it's not little. The idea is very, very, very big. We have a lot of things to do. So this is what I can say from for acro farm the genesis of acro farms this is what i can say yeah i saw a man who at the accommodation place oh where what? you are living yeah. the farm manager's house yeah, yeah. the use of that one okay uh for me i always i have a can-do spirit trust me if i want to do something now no matter how it is, whether I can do or not, I have to force myself to do it. I have a can do spirit. Okay. What you saw over there is for fish pond. I wanted to do a catfish. And initially it was like something small. And later on I said, ah, what am I going to use all this compound for? It's only farm manager who is living here. The compound, the, the land are there, so I decided to start digging and then construct for the fish pond. And now I have about 34 fish pond. I have not started yet. And the, the idea is after that, I'm going to do the catfish. And then I will smoke it, package it nicely, and then go for delivery. That's the idea. So it's for catfish. Yeah. And I saw something like tractor also around your farm. Yeah. What is the use of that one? Also? Okay. Yeah. The tractors, even I have a couple of them. I have a very big land at a, a farm place, a place called Asenkesu. I have 5,000 acres. You see, um, for bears, eh, if, you, if you don't take time, you use all your money for feeding. Only maize for their feed is about 70-75%. So I buy a lot of maize. So when you go to a farm place, I have a very huge land over there. I just got it. And uh, it's also a virgin land. So there is a lot of work on it, big trees and other things. So I'm going to use that tractor for the farming. So some of them are there already. And very soon, this one, I will transport it to a farm place for the farming, maize farming. Yeah, that's the idea. And I saw a new equipment at the top there. What are those used for? Oh, that equipment over there, it just came. 
Yeah. yeah. You see, the maize, it's not all the time you get maize in Ghana here. But the best are eating every single day. Whether you like it or not, they are yeah. going to eat. So we, you need a lot of maize. So that equipment over there is called silo. It's like the one over here. All the equipment we are seeing over there is the same as this, but not the size like this. It's 10 times of this. Because one silo is 500 tons. And five, no, for one silo is 500 tons, yes. And 500 tons take 10,000 bucks. Every 500 tons take 10,000 bucks. So that silo over there is 503, which is 1,500, which is going to take 30 bucks of 50 kg of mix. So I'm going to mount it over there, one, two, three. One of them is a dryer. So when the maize is not dry, it's going to dry it and transfer it to the other two. When it's full, then it come back and it come back. Do, do, do you get me? Yeah. Yes. So in silo, we are going to use it to dry our maize and then also store our maize. So all of them are silos over there. Yeah. Thank you, director, for the opportunity you gave to us. We are now getting to the manager for more information. Right. Thank you to OT Daku TV. We really, really appreciate you because you are from far, all the way from um, Sunyane to Eastern Region Acro Farms, Apasari near Adoso Equipim. Uh, we are more, 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 more grateful. And the Acro Farms, we have the can do spirit. If you want to enter into a farming like pottery farm and you have no idea, you can come across us. And then any idea we have, we can also share with you so that not bigger than this, but if you want to do something little, you can start it. So each and everyone who want to enter into a poultry farm and you have your land, your, uh, you have the can-do spirit. Because for poultry farm, if you don't have a can-do spirit, you cannot do it, trust me. So if you have the can-do spirit, you have the passion for the farm, you can contact our co farms and small idea we have, we can share with you. We also have an incubator here. Very soon we are going to start hatchery. And my incubator takes 40,000 at the go. And I'm sure by November ending, we will start the operating. Also, we are going to do um, egg crate, the paper egg tree. tree. We call it tree. Yeah, Ghana call it crate, but when you go outside the country, they call it X3, 3, 3. Yeah, very soon we are going to manufacture some of them at the top over there. So in case somebody need it, you can order it because the whole country, can you imagine that we have only one factory in the country? When you go to Ashikare near Akosomo area, only one factory. And uh, if I tell you the demand in the country, you will be surprised. So Acro Farm is going to manufacture uh, their own egg tray very soon. I'm hoping later by December uh, we will start operating. So we are thanking you, OT, OT Daku TV, so much for coming to Acro Farms once again. Please subscribe to our channel if you are not yet subscribed. Manager, why is the water at the gate and at the entrance? Well, um, every poultry farm, we have a term we call biosecurity. And this biosecurity prevents, uh, measures we take to prevent disease from occurring or coming to the farm. So what you saw at the gate is a whale back. In its process, what it does is we fill it with disinfectants and water so that any vehicle that passes through that comes into the farm will be disinfected. Every disease that is bringing from the outside to the farm will be neutralized to zero, so that the farm will be safe, the best will be safe. Friday, the buildings are all covered throughout, and this place is with black meat. Can you explain it? Okay, yes. Um, Agro Farm is a fully automated uh, poultry farm house. We have our buildings enclosed from top to bottom we reject or we don't want any other animals coming into the system uh, they are all in this 
situation because we uh, wanted to reduce the risks of diseases coming into the building. At the same time, we wanted to have a different phase of farming, which is uh, the different technology we are having in Europe. We are bringing the same thing to Ghana here. So what we, our uh, promoters thought wise was to bring in this kind of building that you are seeing here, where we have the buildings enclosed fully and being automated fully too. So the black net you are seeing, we call it the cooling pad. That is the ventilation system of the house. No matter what you do, you need to allow air to flow through the house. So this cooling pad has pools in them where we pour water in there, we add disinfectant to it. Then we have a pumping machine in there that sucks the water, takes it up to the cooling pad, released by gravity. Then when it goes, comes down by gravity, any air coming from outside, which is being pulled in by the extractor fans, you see behind there, let cool air flow through the building. So we have good temperature in the building, which is roughly between 21 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, maximum should be around 27 when the weather is very high. So the black nets you see there are cooling pads, which are made of paper actually. Uh, when water goes through it, it comes down, but it's a cycle. So it flows, comes down, goes back again, comes down, and all this is automated. So when the building is hot, or inside is very hot, then these motors, with the help of the command on the monitor, sparks uh, the motor and the water starts flowing through it. When the building is too cool, it cuts power and then the system cools down. So that's how it works. These are the cooling parts. Can we tell us how the eggs are transferred from inside to outside? Yeah, so as you you went from looking at the whole cage system, we have where we collect eggs, which is the egg belt. Uh, it's a conveyor system. So what it does is that when they lay, because the cages are inclined in a certain angle, all the eggs roll towards the uh, belt, the conveying belt. Then when the time is up for collection, the control panel is packed on, then all the eggs move from wherever they are onto a collection point, which is also a conveyor that conveys it to another conveying uh, machine, which brings it outside to where those who are going to do a picking or collection will collect the eggs and then pack them into crates. And this whole thing is connected from one room house to the next house. So you also have a view of uh, the other house, layer house two, being connected to layer house one with the same connect, uh, conveying uh, system. So when they even lay at that point, we have a system that conveys all the eggs to one collection point, which you see here. What is the use of the blue drum inside the house? Yeah, well, um, because we are Having an automated system, we also use the nipple line system. With the nipple line system, we need water coming in, and then we need to also give the best medication. So, water from outside, which is an up tank behind the building, flows into the building by gravity or sometimes by the help of pump, depending on what we, how fast we want the water. Then, inside the house, we have another drum or another gallon um, barrel that we do our concentrated mixing in in there, which is uh, medication. So anytime I want to give the best any vitamin, we want to give them any vaccination, we do that in the container. But that has an effect with uh, all that runs together with the dosatron. There's another system called the dosatron. So anytime we mix it, this dosatron, what it does is that it takes sample of the water, sample of the um, concentrated medication, mix them together and then release it to the best to drink. So when you see certain things in any pottery house, it, dif it differs from everybody. We are using a drum. Somebody might use a small polyta, a small gallon. Somebody might use a, a small bucket, depending on the quality of best in the building. So we are looking at giving the best that much of uh, water that they require. And that made us go for the blue drum. So that's the use of it for medication and for vaccination. Please subscribe to our channel if you are not yet subscribed. What is the work of the silo behind the house? Uh, basically, it's meant for storage of feed, or uh, for raw materials. Over here, we use it for feeding. 
So when the feed is being prepared or it's prepared at the uh, warehouse or the feed mill, we need a place to store it that the animals can eat it bit by bit. At the same time, it reduces workload because when able to store it, anytime the animal requires feed to be eaten, you just start the machine. It pulls all the feed from the silo into the building. So that is for storage. And with that, then you are able to prevent lot losses. At the same time, prevent uh, attack of rodents that come to uh, infect the feed with um, their feces and then urine. You know, when you store it in a poly bag or a bag, that most farmers do. Uh, you end up having mice or rats coming into the warehouse and when they do that, they defecate on the uh, feed, they also urinate on it, this causes contamination and when it does that, it affects the bed and since these beds are enclosed, they have no access to the natural environment, you are supposed to make sure that things that goes to them are right. How can they transfer the jumping of the system? Okay, yes, um, we have a system that we, normally, we call the manual belt system. So, uh, what is that? That every stage or every tier of the cages have this system running underneath. So, when we have um, the chickens dropping onto these belts, every two days we run this system to the outside of the farm. They are all on belt, conveying belt. So the conveying belt transform, transfer the feces from the room to the outside where we take it to the dump site. In this process, you don't have a contamination of the whole building. You know, animal feces contain, uh, uh, when these things are more in the room, they start rusting things in the room. Uh, although our buildings are galvanized and stuff, but still you need to prevent the uh, concentration of ammonia in the building. Yeah. So when the ammonia is too much, it affects the beds and then other diseases set in. So with this, our dropping uh, system we have in there, we make sure that when the time is up for them to, uh, the manure to go, we pack the machine, then everything comes out, thereby reducing ammonia in the building and saving the beds from any harm that will come to them. Thank you, Melita, for supporting and helping us to know more about the farms. God bless you. You're welcome. Please subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell. Thank you, our viewers, for supporting and continue to support us. God bless you all.